How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining me with another math lesson with Mr. Wilfred. Today, we're going to look at our very our second unit and unit five, rates and proportionality. But we're going to be talking about uh, we're representing proportional relationships with tables. All right. Now, just as a recap, we talked about a little bit of the unit rate last uh, lesson, talked about how to calculate the unit rate. I didn't introduce the formula, formula for it. I just talked to you about recognizing when they tell you this per that, you're looking to find one of something. All right, look to see what the second word is per hour it means one hour per second means one second per cupcake means one cupcake. And that's going to help you really understand, okay, what are they asking me to find of and what do I need to divide what goes on top what goes on the bottom when I'm dividing to find that unit rate. Today we're going to dive into a little bit more of an understanding as to what a proportional relationship really is. I know Ms. Weber, you said um, any uh, a fraction set equal to another fraction. That's proportional. That's a ratio, right? If there's if one half is equal to two fourths, that's proportional relationships. A ratio equal to a ratio. But why? Why is that the case? Because there's something called a constant of proportionality, and that's what helps something become proportional, or even to determine if something is proportional. All right. So let's take a look in, second to look at lesson number two of our unit five unit. And as always, take a moment to pause your lesson and work on the bell work. Now this bell work happens to have you complete the exit slip for lesson 5.1. So that's the reason why we didn't actually take it last lesson. Instead, you're gonna do it this lesson. Let's do it. Pause the video if you need to. All right, awesome. Now I do wanna make sure I actually go over with you because that's the only way that you'll be able to understand if you did it right or if you did it wrong. So give me one second, let me just pull it up here. Okay, now looking at the exit slip from 5.1, you're tasked with finding the unit rate, right? Of I believe there's two problems. And the second problem is actually asking you if uh, what's the name is correct. I gotta figure out what her name is. Give me a second, let me pull it up here. Excellent. All right, great. So let me actually share my screen so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. Okay. This is our bell work. This is the bell work that you worked on. Mary buys six t-shirts for the cost of $30. They want to find what's the unit cost of one t-shirt. That means they want a uh, cost. Let me just click on this. They want cost over one t-shirt. That's what they want us to find. What is the cost for one t-shirt? Okay. So what did they tell us? They told us that $30 was the cost for six t-shirts, right? So if that's the case, if I were to divide this, I would be able to figure out what the cost of one t-shirt is. 30 divided by six gives me $5. And this should have been dollars. Sorry, I apologize. It's a dollar symbol, right? I'm um, not sure why it's rotating. Didn't rotate it myself. But I'll just move it out the way a little bit here um, before I end up rotating it back myself. Let's see. Let's see if I can rotate it back. Give me one second. All right, sorry about the technical glitches. All right, so we end up getting uh, $5 per t-shirt. All right, and that is one t-shirt, $5 for one t-shirt. That's the unit rate. Now, the bottom part of the uh, exit slip is saying that Devin is trying to find the unit price of a six pack of drinks that's on sale. So they wanna find the unit price, which means they're trying to find price per drink, or in other words, for one drink. What is the unit price on a six pack? The sister says that at that price, each drink, which costs $2. Is that true? So if I'm trying to find the unit price, I'm gonna end up doing $2.99. Let's do $2.99, that's money, divided by six, a uh, six pack in total, right? And with that, that should be able to let us know how much one drink cost. And when you divide this, you get about four, uh, almost 50 cents, let's say 49 cents per drink. So is the sister correct that each drink will cost over $2? The answer is no. Each drink will cost 49 cents. 
and you multiply that by six and you would get your total of 299, okay? And this is the correct price that she would pay per drink, all right? That's us using the unit rate, us identifying what they're asking us to find, price over drink, or as the first one was telling us, cost of t-shirts over the amount of t-shirts you're getting, okay? That's a big deal when you're looking to find the unit rate. Identify what exactly they're asking you. If you can't identify what they're asking you, you're going to most likely end up getting that incorrect. Now, looking at today's lesson, we're going to talk about representing portion relationships when it comes to tables, right? When we look at a table, let's represent it there. Um, how can we use tables to represent portion relationships? We're going to talk about that today. A portion relationship, believe it or not, is a is a, a portion relationships uh, are between two quantities in which the ratio of one quantity to another is constant. So we're going to talk about finding something called a constant proportionality. It means to be a constant move from going from one to the next. Just as an activity for the sake of it, see if you can do activity one. Determine if A is proportional and you can write yes or no, or you can write proportional or not proportional. Is B proportional, you can write yes or no, and determine if it is, right? Just from what you currently know. If you looked at the tables, what would you think? Okay. Now, if you looked at A and you said, A, yes, this is proportional. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Okay. You said, yes, it's proportional. If you said B, you looked and you said, no, it's not proportional. That doesn't make any sense. You'd be right there. Okay, give me a second. Let me once again flip this around. I'm not sure why it's desiring me to have to do the flip, but I will entertain it. All right, so if you said yes and you said no, you were right there, but why? Why is A proportional and why is B not proportional? Well, let's talk about it. You know the cost of one um, adult ticket at this amusement park is 75 cents. Cool, two, 150, three, 225. Great, there's a pattern there. Hmm, that's important. When I look at B, why would I say it's not proportional? Well. 10 apples cost 250, 20 apples cost me $4, 30 apples cost me $6. Hmm. Shouldn't 20 apples cost me five? Shouldn't 40 apples, since there's double of 20, cost me eight? Something is going on here. Now, there is a quick way to find out if something is proportional. And the way you do that is you're going to look at the tables and you need to find something called the constant of proportionality. Now, for the sake of this lesson, as well as all the rest of the lessons that we're going to go into, from now on, when I mention constant of proportionality, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say that the letter K represents the constant. And you can write this down. This is important. K represents the constant. Now, how do I know if something without a doubt is constant? I'm going to do this formula here. I'm going to say, okay, well, if something is indeed constant, that means that Y divided by X is always going to be the same, no matter how many Y's I divide by X. What do you mean Y and X? Take, for example, A. We said this was constant. The first row, we're going to consider an X. The second row, we're going to consider Y. Now, if you know anything about tables, you should know that that's kind of how tables work. Some tables are horizontal like this. Some tables are vertical. Right, but the first column is always your x, the second column is always your y. So if I take the second column, which is y divided by x, it needs to give me the same number every time. What's 75 divided by 1? 75. What's 150 divided by 2? 75. 225 divided by 3? 75. Every time I do it, it gives me 75. That makes it a constant. There is a constant here. Whereas if I go over here, I do 250 divided by 10, that's 25. 25 cent or something like that, right, um, per apple. But when I do 40 divided by 20, I don't get that. I get 20 cent per apple. That means there's not a constant here. 2.50 divided by 10, equaling 25 cent, and $4 divided by 20, give me 20 cents. There is not a constant here, which means this is not proportional. Proportional tables always start at zero, zero. Now, you should know zero, zero is indicating of the origin, right? All this stuff I'm writing down, you should write down too. Notice here, this one, 
does not start at origin. So right away, I can assume that the second table is not proportional. But there's something else that Thomas tells me if it's proportional. So one, it has to start at zero, zero. And the second observation here is it needs to have a constant. The constant is always going to be y divided by x. So once again, if I say, okay, y divided by x, is this always going to be the same? Are all these numbers the same? Is 6 divided by 2 the same as 12 divided by 4? Is that the same thing as 18 divided by 6? Does it make a proportional relationship like this? Two fractions set equal to each other. The answer is yes. How do I know? Because this is 3 is equal to 3, which is equal to 3. That is proportional. Whereas over here, you'll notice here, this doesn't make sense. Watch. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Whereas 16 divided by 4 is 4. It doesn't work. Even if it doesn't work one time, it doesn't work at all. It has to work every single time in order to be called a proportional relationship, all right? So there's two facts you need to understand about proportional relationships. One, they start at the origin. Two, when you do y divided by x, you always get the same number. Now, I am gonna go further into that right now during doing another set of modeling. This lesson is more teaching than any other lesson because it's an important concept to get, okay? We talk about the unit rate. And if you look at this modeling table I've got, you should be able to identify the unit rate. If you notice the very first set of numbers here is the unit rate. How do I know? Because it's three miles per league. Okay, that's what this says, three miles per league and that's a unit rate, okay? If you need to write this down, write it down, write the unit rate here. It's very important that you can look at a table and say, oh, I see the unit rate there because it tells me for every one league, there are three miles. That's a unit rate. Now, the problem with this table here, ladies and gentlemen, is missing data. There's missing values in this table and on your table that you're gonna just say, you're gonna have to fill in the missing values too. How do I do that? Well, you're gonna use the actual constant of proportionality. How do I do that? I'm gonna look at the table and identify a pair of numbers that they give me. Do they give me the, the opposite of the two? Do they give me the other number for the six? No, do they give me the other number for 36? Do they give me the other number for 20,000? No, they don't, but they do give you three and one. You know three and one is the unit rate. So if I do three divided by one, because y divided by x, this should give me the constant. The constant just so happens to be also the unit rate. So hold on, Mr. Orford. Could you say that the unit rate and the constant are the same? Yes, you can. You can. If you know the unit rate, you know what the constant is. If you know the constant, you know what the unit rate is. You know how much is increasing by. You know how much one of something is. You can, you got both of them. They are the same. The way you find them is y still divided by x. So I know that every time I do y divided by x, it should equal three. Every time I do y divided by x, it should equal three. 3 divided by 1 gives me 3. What divided by 2 is going to give you 3? What divided by 2 is going to give you 3? In this case, when you're looking to find the top number, multiply. Multiply the bottom number by the constant. OK? So when I do two times three, that gives me six. Now, when I'm looking, so if I kept that same exact understanding, I need to find the top, I'm gonna to multiply these two. Six times three is gonna give me 18. But when I'm looking to find the bottom number, notice that these are all, every number at the top is my Y's. So this is a Y, this is a Y, right? but this is an X. So when I need to find the X down here, remember it's Y divided by X. That's why it's 36 divided by blank. It still has to give me three. In this case, I am going to divide. I'm going to divide in this case. 36 divided by three is going to give me 12. And once again, since this is the bottom, I need to make sure I multiply here. It's going to give me 60,000, okay? Now, let me recap. 
every y divided by x needs to give you the constant. So even though there are blanks missing here, I know that the y divided by whatever the x value is, or the, or the x missing divided by whatever the y value is, has to give me this three. It has to give me the constant of proportionality, okay? So I'm saying, okay, what is what blank divided by two is gonna give me three? In that case, since I'm missing the actual uh, y value there, I'm gonna multiply the x times the constant and I'm gonna get the y. But when I'm missing the x value, I'm gonna divide the y by the constant to get the x, okay? So keep that in mind, that's a technique that you can use to find this out. What I want you to do right now is this, take a moment, to find the constant of proportionality in these actual tables. Now, they may be asking for the constant ratio, uh, but I just want you to find the constant, okay? On your worksheet, I'm gonna get rid of this um, constant ratio. I just want you to find the constant for me, okay? Should I? Mm. No, we can leave it as constant ratio, right? Find the constant ratio. So I'll do six divided by two. That gives me three. So the constant ratio here is three to one. Okay. Otherwise known as your unit rate, right? So that's one way of doing it. And you do each one of those. And now that I know that that's one, I am then going to also go and find the missing numbers. So if I, that's the constant there, then I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm missing this number up here. Three divided by something has to give me three. Okay. Remember, you're looking for the x value here, you're going to divide. If you're looking for the y value, you're going to multiply. Take a moment to work through this. Please, after you're done, work on a reflection question. And then, of course, you'll be going to work on the homework if you needed to as well. All right? Take a moment. This is less is going to take a while, but I believe that you're going to do well. Any questions and all questions that you have, feel free to put them on the actual Google Classroom page where I will gladly help you. All right? Thank you so much for joining me with another math lesson with Mr. Wilford. Enjoy your day.